Hey everybody, today I'm going to go over the techniques I used to create this bowl of ramen in an anime slash illustration style. This video is going to be more of an overview of how certain effects are achieved rather than a step-by-step -step guide. But if you'd like to see a step-by-step -step guide, let me know, and I'd be more than happy to make one. I used a few different methods to create the different models. The more simple shapes were just created with basic subdivision surface modeling. You create the general shape with a low poly object and then apply a subdivision surface modifier. To refine the shape, you can either add support loops, or what I like to do is select the edge you want to refine and hit Shift E to create an edge crease which controls the sharpness of the edge in the subdivided mesh. The noodles are just bezier curves with some bevel for thickness. I like to use the draw curve tool to get a nice swooshy shape, which you can then refine using the handle. The flatter objects like the onions and seaweed are just planes and cylinders with a solidify modifier. For the broth spilling out, I used a fluid simulation. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what every setting does, but I've linked a very good tutorial if you'd like to learn more about the specifics. What I did was simply create a cube, select object, quick effects, quick liquid. I then stole apart my bowl mesh and turned it into a fluid collision in the physics settings. If you're using a plane like I am, make sure you turn up the surface thickness so the fluid doesn't go straight through. A value of 0.7 to 1.2 works okay. Then, with the domain selected, you can go into the physics properties. Make sure mesh is checked. Turn down the end frame because all we need is the splash. Change the type to all and then bake all. It's very unlikely that it'll look how you want on the first try, so now it's just a case of trial and error, changing the size and shape of the inflow object and moving it around a bit, messing with the settings, baking it again and again. When you get something you like, you can simply pause it on the desired frame, duplicate it in case you change your mind, learn that one the hard way, and then apply the modifiers. You can then clean up the mesh with some proportional editing and delete any bits that you don't need. The bulk of the texturing is carried by the shader to RGB node. It's used to apply additional effects on the output of BSDFs. Simply place the output of a principled BSDF into the shader to RGB, then run the color through a color ramp with the interpolation set to constant. You can then input the color values for the light and dark tones that you want for that object and move the stops around to adjust. For some of the objects, I included a half tone effect in the shadows. To create this effect, I created a Voronoi texture using the window coordinates, which basically uses the coordinates of the space looking into the 3D viewport, or if you're looking through a camera, the view from the camera defines the coordinates. Anyway, from the Voronoi texture, plug the distance into a color ramp set to constant and make the values a light grey and a white. You can then group these nodes to use for the other objects. Then run a color ramp off of your main colors and separate the different shades into different shades of gray. If you want a certain shade to have darker halftone circles, then make the shade darker and lighter for lighter circles. Then combine this color ramp with the Voronoi group with a mix RGB. Gray shades go into the top and the Voronoi goes into the bottom. Set the blending mode to linear light, then you can place another color ramp afterwards to fine tune the values. You can then combine this with the original colors with a mix RGB node set to multiply. I made two different shaders for the broth, one for the spill and one for the stationary broth. They are almost identical, so I'll go over the stationary one first. The basis of the shader is a noise texture plugged into a color ramp with constant interpolation. I then played around with different positions of white, grey and black values to create the ripples. Then to create a ring around the outside, I used this node setup here, which I combined with the noise using an add node, making sure clamp is checked. I then added one more noise texture for detail, which I made a bit darker using a math node set to multiply. 
because I didn't want any real shadows on my broth, I sent this straight through a color ramp with some lighter colors at both ends and a darker color in the middle, and then plugged it straight into the surface output. For the spill, I assigned a mesh to the same material and then pressed the little 2 to duplicate it. I then replaced these nodes with a fernel and a color ramp to create the same ring effect. For the textures with a bit of extra detail, the meat, the sweet corn, etc, I drew a very crude texture in Photoshop, which I then brought into Blender and projected from view to line up the textures on the mesh. Then I plugged the image straight into the surface output. If I wanted shadows, for example on the sweet corn, I combined the image texture with a basic tune shader with a mix RGB node set to multiply. If you don't have Photoshop, there are plenty of free alternatives like Krita or GIMP. There are a few ways to create tune outlines in Blender. In this case, I used the solidify method. This method is very simple. Select the object you want to give an outline and create a new material, which is just an emission shader. The color of the emission will be the color of your outline. In my case, it was just black. Then go to your material settings and make sure back face culling is checked and the blend mode is set to alpha blend. Then apply a solidify modifier and check flip normals. Also, make sure your material offset is set to the number of positions that the outline material is away from your original material. So if you only have one of the material on that object, the material offset will be one. You can then adjust the solidify thickness to adjust the size of the stroke. I would recommend applying the scale as well if you're trying to keep a consistent stroke width. For some final details, Make sure all the objects are shaded smooth so they don't look all jagged. In my scene, I also didn't want many of the objects to have a shadow, so in the material settings, I set the shadow mode to none for all the objects except the bowl and broth spill. For the world settings, I didn't want the world to affect the lighting, so I used this simple setup to have a separate background for the lighting and what's visible through the camera. There is only one light in the scene, and it's a sunlight with the angle set to zero degrees. Finally, to create the shadow catcher, I used a shader to RGB node to separate the shadows, which I used as a factor to combine the same Voronoi setup with a transparent shader, making sure to set the blend mode to alpha blend. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any more questions. I hope you learned a thing or two, and thanks for watching.